Time now for your community focus. Patrick Kennedy served Rhode Island in Congress for 16 years before handing the baton to David Cicilline. Now he's a mental health advocate living in New Jersey with his wife and kids. He joins us now live via Zoom. Congressman Kennedy, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Kim. It's great to be with you. So, of course, I want to talk to you about a topic that I know you're incredibly passionate about, mental health. But before we get to that, I have to ask you about the news of the day. Congressman Cicilline, your successor in the 1st District, is now stepping away from Washington. What was your reaction to the news, and have you spoken to him about it? Well, uh, like most uh, folks, I was taken by surprise. Uh, David's done an amazing job at cementing himself on the national level really seen as a leader. Obviously, we all know in Rhode Island how smart he is, how capable he is. And I think that my colleagues in Washington clearly saw that and saw what a tremendous representative he was, not just for Rhode Island, but really his potential nationally. I don't think that necessarily goes away, but I think right now his stepping down is a huge loss uh, for our state. Uh, we were able to really rely on the fact that uh, he was very close with former Speaker Pelosi and others, and he managed to accomplish a lot in his years as congressman. Lots of names are you being floated for who might replace him. Who would you like to see toss their hat into the ring? Well, as you know, I was a big fan of Helena Folks in the race for governor. I think she's uh, very capable and uh, obviously would make a great elected official. But I know many of the others that are contemplating a run. I don't even know if Helena is going to consider it, but uh, she definitely comes off strong, especially after the very strong uh, race that she made for governor. And uh, listen, when you're elected to the Congress, one of the House seats in Rhode Island, you're right in the, as they say, in the gang of four. You know, in Washington, it's all the, the leaders who are in the gang of eight. But in Rhode Island, the gang of four, that's the size of our congressional district. And uh, as you know, in Rhode Island, if you're representing either one of the congressional districts, you're seen as a, a Rhode Island uh, leader, not just a member of that congressional district that you represent. Small state certainly makes for an interesting dynamic. We've got just about a minute left, and I do want to pivot now to the topic of mental health, particularly in the political arena. As we know, Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman now seeking treatment for clinical depression, and, and you lived this. You've been open about your bipolar disorder, seeking treatment for addiction while in office. Do you think things are different now than they were back then? It certainly feels that way, and I I think all of us uh, are certainly pulling for Senator Fetterman. If he's, we know that you have a much higher risk for clinical depression if you've had a stroke. And frankly, the medical community knowing this probably should have done more to prevent him having clinical depression the, since we know this. But as we all know, the mental health system is trying to do a lot all at once to catch up after decades of neglect. And that's what I'm working on uh, as the founder of the Kennedy Forum. And we're really working towards uh, really enforcing the Mental Health Parity and Addiction Equity Act, which I was honored to sponsor. And thankfully, Rhode Islanders were willing to keep me in office so that we could finish the job. And of course, we passed that in 2008. And in 2010, it was part of the essential health benefits when the Affordable Care Act was passed. So. Uh, I just want to thank so many of my friends in Rhode Island for giving me the chance to work on that bill in spite of the very difficult challenge that I had uh, coping with a chronic illness of addiction. Tomorrow, in fact, is my 12 year um, sobriety anniversary. Ooh. I had through the course of my time a year here, a year there, uh, but really I've had the chance to devote myself uh, more full time to my recovery having left office. Uh, but that's not to say that I haven't been enormously grateful for the opportunities that I had while serving Rhode Island in the first district. Well, congratulations to you on that milestone. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have, but we appreciate your time today. Former Congressman Patrick Kennedy, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Kim.